Hi guys, how are you? My name is Zura. Today we're going to talk about enhanced object properties in ES6 and the structuring assignment of variables. We have two variables, var x is 15 and var y is 16. And we define a new property, let's, let me replace with let x and let y, and we have another property, let object is a new object, and I want that this object has x property and y property. In ES6, we actually have a shorthand for this. We can remove the value from this object and leave only key and this is the exact same code. This defines a property where x is the value and x is the key and y is the value and y is the key. This way of defining properties is really convenient when it's about adding methods inside object like you may have function set age for example which takes argument and you want your object tool has this set age so you can directly put it here like this another new thing inside uh, object properties is that you can actually have computed properties when you define a property property previously in es5 if you wanted your object to have um, and then some, some property which is the computed value, for example, object full plus bar is something. And let's imagine that foo is a function. So if you want if you want to do this thing in ES6, you can directly put this code in object assignment which is something it wasn't possible in ES5 and it is now possible in ES6 and another useful thing is about uh, property uh, methods when you have method as a property you generally did something like this foo is a function which prints full. Let me delete the following code. Now you can have this simplified, remove this function keyword and colon and you have full. And this doesn't affect the lexical this inside function because this is a normal function uh, in ES6. This is not an arrow function. So if we print this keyword inside our uh, full function, we have object foo and this inside object foo is this, the, the actual obj object. This is not an arrow function. About destructuring. What is destructuring? Let me show you an example. We have a function which does something, calculates something, but you want two value to be returned from this function. What you probably doing um, is you return either array, which has two values inside it, or you return object, which has two keys and values inside it. So I have done this before a lot of times when ES6 uh, before ES6 uh, was released. So I'm doing something and I want to return my uh, for example, count property and the list also. So I have uh, const count property. Well, when if you calculate something, it cannot be const. And I have my list property, which is which is an array. So I have an object, and I I want to return my so my object. First of all. Let's use our enhanced properties and we just write count and list here. 
So I return an object which has count key and list key and their corresponding values. So let result is full. And let's print the result. And it's an object. Then later in the code when I do something like this, later in the code I want to extract this and in ES5 we were doing let count is result count and let list is result list. And I print count and list. Now this can be done in much shorter code in ES6. We can have braces here, the syntax is like this. We have braces here and we are telling the engine that foo returns an object. And I want count to I want to define with let keyword. I want to define count property here, which is count property also from the returned object. And I want to define list property here, which is list property also in the returned object. And this has the same output. If I return C and L, for example, from this, um, sorry, I can C corresponds to count and L corresponds to list. So I'm returning C and L here and this will give us undefined because we, want, we are telling engine again that I want count property from this return object but there, are, there is no count property. So we can actually tell the engine that I want to take C property from the returned object and save it in a local variable count. And now this, this gives me uh, my count to be a C property, which is 15. And I can tell the same thing. I want a uh, returned object which has L property inside it to be saved in my local variable list. And I have 15 in my array. We can actually have nested objects um, in, in the return object can have another object inside it. Like for example, O is another object which has name. And I want to, this O to be saved uh, somewhere in my local variable. So this is easy. I just write O here and I print O and my O is an object. But at some point I want to take my name property, which is a nested property inside O object, and save it in a local variable. Here I am doing like this. I have O is an object, O is returned from the object, which has name property inside it, and I just type here name. And I print name here. This tells the engine I want my name, pro I want to create a local name property which is actually a property of an O object which is returned from the foo. And this gives me uh, John as the third argument in the console log statement. I can have the same similar thing here n is returned I, and I can say that n, which is a property of an O object, I want this to be saved in a local variable giving it a name. And I can have as deep nesting actually as I want. I can also have default values. Sometimes count may be returned and sometimes it may not be returned. I can have here that my count property is 15. So 
I return count from here again. If count is not returned, okay, let's say my count property is 16. If count is not returned from the code, then it will be 16. In this case, we return count and it is 15. But if I comment this line, my count is now 16. This is a default uh, value of the property. When you give arguments to a function, the arguments are accepted in the same order you give. For example, I have a simple function which accepts name and email, I'm, and I'm executing the function, passing this name and email, and the ordering is the same. The first is name, second is email. Actually, in ES6, we have named arguments. And it works in the following way. In the test function, instead of individual arguments, we are passing it um, as an object. Inside the object name is John and email is John at example.com. This is an, actually we are passing here an object and if we accept it like this, uh, our name will be an object and email will be undefined. Exactly, email is undefined and name is the object. Here, when we are about to accept arguments, we need to write these braces also and this is a, the example of destructuring also. We are passing an object and here we tell engine by these braces that, okay, uh, the argument will be an object which will have name and email properties and you need to extract them and save it in a local variables. And we have name and email properties here. Here we can also uh, change our name and email and call something different. We are passing a name, but we can call it n here, or we can pass n and call it name here. So the name, we call it n here, and email, we call it e here. So we don't have name and email anymore, and this code will give us an error. Email is not defined. By the way, why the name is defined. Ah, that's some global global name. Okay, um, we we should we need to access it uh, with n and e also here. And we can change the places. The first one is email, and the second one is name. But name will n will be name and e will be email. That's the advantage that you instead of giving an individual arguments, you give an object there, but you accept as individual arguments here inside the function declaration. And I think that's really convenient. We can actually have default values for this email and name. Like we can say that email is test at example.com and name is n. So if we don't pass email anymore, by the way, here we need to write email also. If we don't pass email anymore, our email will be test at example.com. The same syntax works if we replace our object braces with array brackets. We can actually replace our braces with brackets, array brackets, and access it like an array. We have we are passing here an array, and we accept it here as an array also, where name is the first argument, and the second argument is email. We print name and email also. In this case, email will be undefined because we don't pass it here, but we can pass the email here. The thing is that this is not anymore named variable, so you cannot 
change uh, your variables you cannot swap actually if my email property will be the first in the given array this becomes uh, name and this becomes email so I think uh, writing in an object notation is much more convenient and useful if we return back to our previous code where we return an object and do the structuring of this object when, and define the new variables, we can actually have an array example here. We can return array from the full object and create local variables here at this line and extract from the array. So instead of returning an object, let's return an array which has the first argument list and the second argument um, or the first argument is count and the second argument is list and we accept here we define variables here also in an array notation in brackets we say that count and list so by this we are telling engine Full object is going to return array. I want the first property to be saved inside count variable and the second property to be saved inside a list variable. And this gives us um, count and list in the output. We don't have this name. We cannot have named properties here. If we swap list and count, the first one is always count. So list is count. We print now count and list. So the count is a list in this case, and this is the first argument. And the second argument is list, which is count, which is 15. Ordering here actually matters. If, we, if you want the count, it should be first one. We can actually have here also nested arrays. We can return the another array which has like John for example which is a name in this case uh, we need to accept it and save in another in another variable so if we write name here this will give us the arrays third argument which will be array so if I print name here this will give me an array if I want uh, my name to be string then I need to put this inside brackets also, nested brackets. Now my name will be John as a string. This is the end of the video. Uh, destructuring is really useful and if you start using it immediately uh, you will get used to it and uh, this will speed up your coding uh, a lot. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, click on the like button, uh, feel free to leave comments below uh, and consider to subscribe to stay tuned. See you in the next video.